So here's another example where we're actually going to do something in three dimensions this time instead of two. So it's a little harder to visualize, but I think we can still do it. So we're going to look at a transformation now that goes from R, a linear transformation, from R3 to R3. And uh, this is a little hard to describe, but what I want to do is uh, rotate all of R3, that's three-dimensional space, around the z-axis. Okay, so what I have in mind here is I'll just draw some quick 3D axis. Axis, there's the z-axis. Let's make that the x-axis. Let's make that the y-axis. And what I have in mind here is grabbing hold of the z-axis and just twisting R3 around it. So the whole thing just sort of spins around like a merry-go-round around this little central post here in the middle. So first of all, what I want to do here is find the, first of all, the standard matrix of that transformation, and then think about, visually speaking, can I tell what its eigenvectors are, uh, if indeed it has any eigenvectors, maybe nothing stays, uh, stays uh, scaled in place, and uh, what are its eigenvalues. So let's take a look here. So to find that standard matrix, let's think about what we have to do. I have to look at the, uh, the columns of the 3x3 three three identity matrix, which I'm drawing here right now, okay? So here is a zero, here is one, zero, zero. Okay, now where does it go? Well, oh, I didn't tell you how much I want to rotate this by. That would be probably pretty helpful. Let's rotate this by 90 degrees counterclockwise. And by counterclockwise, I mean this direction here. So this is going to make it a little easy to see where the uh, transformations end up. So this vector is going to rotate into this guy's position. So the transformation of uh, one, zero, zero, let's write it here, one, zero, zero, is actually right here. Uh, it is uh, 0, 1, 0. And likewise, uh, when I rotate this guy here, this is uh, 0, 1, 0, it's going to end up uh, back in this direction in the negative z-axis, uh, or negative x-axis part. So the transformation of 0, 1, 0 will be uh, negative 1, 0, 0. Now lastly, uh, this guy here on the z-axis, now if you have something that's already on the z-axis, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, 0, 0, 1, it's on the z-axis, it's on that post in the middle here that's at you know, the center of rotation. And so when it rotates, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's its own transformation. So I, we have enough info now to write down the uh, standard matrix for this transformation. So T of x is equal to, the first column is going to be this thing, uh, 0, 1, 0, the transformation of 1, 0, 0. The second column is negative 1, 0, 0. And the third column is 0, 0, 1. And I need I am multiplying by x. So this rotation in 3 space is actually implemented by this matrix multiplication. This is a much easier thing to work with than trying to visualize rotations all over the place. So uh, I'd like to think about eigenvectors now. Uh, we just said that um, anything that is on the z-axis, either positive or negative, sticking down through the floor here, ought to be an eigenvector because it doesn't move when rotated. Um, if that's the case, let's put that to the test. So let's take uh, 0, 0, 1 and multiply it by my matrix here. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okie dokie, and I'm going to multiply this to 0, 0, 1, and let's just see what we end up with. So I have 0, 0, negative 1 times 0, 0 times 1, that's a 0. 1 times 0, 0 times 0, 0 times 1, that's a 0. 0 times 0, 0 times 0, 1 times 1. Okay, so sure enough, when I transform this vector, I get 1 times that vector. Okay, so that tells me, again, three things. First of all, uh, 0, 0, 1 uh, is an eigenvector for this transformation. Or, again, we could also say it's an eigenvector for the matrix that makes the... Uh, uh, transformation happen. And we also know that lambda equals 1 is an eigenvalue for that uh, matrix, or again for that transformation, not eigenvector, eigenvalue. You'll get these mixed up, don't worry about it. And then finally, well, let's think about eigenspace. What is the eigenspace corresponding to this eigenvalue? Well, it is the line uh, through uh, R3 that is traced out by this 0, 0, 1 vector. That is the z-axis. So the z-axis um, is uh, the eigenspace uh, corresponding to or for uh, the eigenvalue lambda equals 1. Now, again, uh, are there any? So that's one eigenvector and its eigenvalue and the eigenspace that kind of gets spanned by it. Uh, are there any others? It turns out there aren't. Uh, we can't prove that right now except visually. If I'm rotating this thing around, 
nothing else is going to stay fixed unless it's on the z-axis. Think of like an old-fashioned record player. Uh, if you put a vector on, a, on an old-fashioned vinyl disc and put it on a record and start spinning it, uh, and well, as long as you don't spin it 360 degrees, it's going to stay put, or, or it's going to it's going to move somewhere. It's going to move in a non-trivial way. It's not just going to be rescaled in place. So it turns out that any other vector in three space here is not going to be an eigenvector. It's going to get rotated completely out of place if you're only doing a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Now later on, algebraically, we'll be able to prove that, but we don't ever want to get too far away from visualization here. So that's a 3D example of eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and eigenspaces.